In this video, I'm going to reveal some of the best ways to share your digital photos with your friends and family. Because sharing photos, isn't that what taking photos is all about? Hi, I'm Amanda Lithcott, the photo organizer, and I'm all about helping you preserve and share your precious photo and video memories without getting overwhelmed. If you're looking to rediscover life's special moments and protect them for future generations, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. For me, the best part of organizing your photos is the sharing, because isn't that what memories are all about? But there are so many options out there. In this video, I'm gonna talk you through some of the great options out there for sharing your photos and the pluses and drawbacks of each of them, with a big warning at the end of what most definitely not to do. Don't say I didn't tell you. But before you run off and start sharing your photos, there are some things we need to think about first. Information versus preserving. Are you just looking to share information just to tell them what you've been up to? Or are you really trying to preserve a legacy? Think about as to why you are sharing your photos with your family members or friends, because that will impact how you share them. One way or two way. By one way, I mean you're sharing to people and you don't want any kind of input or feedback. It's just, here you go, here's my lovely photo catalog. But if it's two way and you want to gather input or photos from friends and family, then some of the options are not going to work for you. The type of content you will be sharing. Are you sharing just photos or a mix of photos and videos? Some options have limitations on the lengths of videos or types of files they will accept. So don't get stuck down the wrong road sharing your lovely memories. The quality of the sharing you need. This is a big one and worth some research, especially when loading stuff up to online options. Are they going to compress your files and lose all that amazing detail forever? Now you've had a think about all that, onto those amazing ways to share all your photos and videos. Online apps. For online apps, there are a ton of options that are pretty good for sharing your photos if you do a little bit of work and they are accessible across both your computer and your phone. If you want to know my views on the top cloud storage options for your photos, then check out my other video linked above. A big watch out when it comes to some of those pesky online apps is that they like to compress your photos to save space and may have limitations on file size. For one way sharing, you can simply send them an image in a message through text or WhatsApp, or you can upgrade the approach and send them a Google link so that they can see your photo in your folders. For two way sharing, you can create a shared album on the likes of Apple and Google Photos. Pop your photos in there and share away and your friends and family can add their photos too. But getting the photos out that aren't yours and into your photo catalog can take a little bit of work, especially if you want to take them out of the apps and move them to somewhere else like an external hard drive. Another two way option is a central folder, just like any file folder on your computer that you can find on OneDrive and Dropbox. Nothing fancy, but the files keep their original quality and they're easily downloadable to another location wherever you want to put them. Photo websites. Photographers have been using photo websites to share their photos for ages, and you can do the same for your photos too. The advantage is they are a really beautiful way to share and store your legacy, and because they are for photographers, they preserve the quality of your photos, but it gets a little bit more expensive and you need to make sure that it will stay around forever. You can either give your friends and family free reign by sharing your login details, or you can give them a password protected access and restrict what they can do to just sharing or giving them the ability to download photos or even add comments to the files. Flickr is a really solid option in this area. And then there is SmugMug, which is a supercharged version, but be warned, to make it look beautiful, it takes a little bit of work. However, SmugMug does have auto upload of your photos from both Android and iPhone into a private folder, so it saves a little bit of time of loading up all those new photos. Also, naturally, there are some limitations when it comes to videos, as these were really set up for sharing photos. So for SmugMug, you are limited to a 20 minute video. But if you are willing to put in the work, it is amazing. Digital tech. Digital tech, and I'm talking digital photo frames, have moved on a lot in the last few years. It used to be a bit of a challenge to load photos onto them. You needed a card or a USB stick that sat with a frame. I have to admit, I used to have one that used to languish in a box for a while because I couldn't be bothered to keep loading up new photos to that USB stick. But now you can get web-enabled photo frames that you can send photos to your frame directly from your phone or even email them to the frame from wherever you might be. I love these and there are a few out there in the market, but I am a super fan girl of Nix Play. They are so cool and I could gush about how easy and fun they are to use. There are limitations on the length of video you can load, but 15 seconds is more than enough for me. Another great option is to turn your smart TV into a digital frame. 
So you can link your Google account to your smart TV and it will happily play beautiful photos for you to sit and watch or make your friends super jealous post your next epic holiday. Printing and gifting photos. There is still something rather lovely about seeing your photos beyond all that digital tech and there is now a whole industry out there on ways to share your photos from mugs to calendars, from cushions to good old trusty photo books. They are a great way to see your photos every day, but for some of the options it can take a little bit of time and investment to build them, like a photo book. But I still leaf through the book given to me by some amazing friends as a gift for a big birthday a few years ago. It is great to see what other people see as your special memories. If the thought of spending time making a photo book fills you with utter dread, then never fear there are professional photo organisers out there who will make the book for you. What not to do? All those options have their pluses and minuses, but now it's time to give you a very stern talking to. Do not, I repeat, do not share your photos on Facebook and expect the quality to be maintained. Facebook compresses your photos within an inch of its life. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying no to Facebook in general, it is a great way to share and keep in touch. But for sharing your photos and using it as a central hub, it is a most definitely no way. So move away from Facebook. So there you have it, the best way to share your digital photos with your friends and family. Do you have any other great tips for sharing your photos with your friends and family? Leave them in the comments below. Are you struggling to actually start organising your photos? Don't know where to start? I have put together a simple, straightforward, quick start guide to organising your photos that's linked in the description below. So click through and I will see you there. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead with a like and a share. Have fun rediscovering your memories. I'll see you in my next video.